Well, this is certainly something different. It's the debut of AFLX from Hindmarsh Stadium in Adelaide as the Crows beat Geelong by eight points in the grand final. So much to talk about as we welcome you to our recap of Tournament 1. Ashley Brown is with me. Ash, your first impressions? Well, it was a very intense three and a half hours. A lot of footy played. Uh, it is a game for players who can run, who are very fit at this time of year. And as we thought, Matty, not a lot of tackling. All right, a few key moments to talk about. Let's begin with the grand final, starting with a super goal from Kirtley Hampton. Uh, it was a pretty impressive moment, this one, as we see him receive the ball from his teammate, load up and go bang to put the Crows well in front of a nice celebration there as well. Now, what about this man? A new star is born, Harry Deer. Well, Harry Deer, Matty, who plays well in grand finals, if you name Deer. His father, Paul, won the 1991 North Smith medal playing for Hawthorne. And Harry, who's been at the Crows now for four years, put his hand up at a really important time uh, with a, a big second half in this grand final. Adelaide uh, might be without Taylor Walker in round one. So great time for Harry Deer to put his name up in lights. Yeah, great movement there from Harry Deer. And we also saw uh, a veteran of the Cats Tom Hawkins with this brilliant goal in the second half from a long, long way out. Here he goes. Bang. He, he can be a beautiful set shot for goal, Tom Hawkins as well, and, the, and that sort of kept the catch in the game when it was a bit, uh, got a bit tight at one stage. And in the end, the Crows too good. Let's hear from the man of the moment for the Crows, Harry Deer. Yeah, it's nice. It's intriguing to get a grip of it, but uh, as game goes on, you sort of got a feel for it. And, it's a good game. It's really exciting. Very, very fast pace. Awesome. Harry Deer there with Limo. It wasn't all that physical, but there were a few moments, Ash, during the night where we just saw how physicality could be used to influence play. Yeah, and if you caught, got caught with a ball and there was a turnover, teams could get you on the fast break because they've got fast players playing. So it was really important uh, to try and keep possession of the ball. But yeah, we did see some good early season tackling, just not a lot of it. The other interesting thing about this format is the rule when you run too far and we saw it a couple of times during the night didn't we? Well players are drilled aren't they for 15 metres but in this game it's uh, in AFLX it's 10 metres you've got to bounce the ball and players were caught out. This one came at a tight stage of the, the second half it could have been costly. Yeah. Now this is something I really like the 11 point play from Ben Davis look at this. Jackson Nelson takes the ball through for behind. I mean, that, they've cracked down that in, in the AFL now, but it really serious consequences in AFL X, Matty, because the penalty of that is you concede the behind, then the ball goes back to the opposing player who gets a shot for goal for 10 points, 40 metres out straight in front. That should be bread and butter for most league footballers these days. And uh, Ben Davis kicks the goal. There you have it, footy's first 11 point play. Yeah, I love the way we saw Jackson just past the silver footy back. He wasn't all that happy with that, was he? Yeah. But Ben Davis nails the 11-point play. Now, no injuries uh, that we know of out of tonight. That is a pretty good story. Well, it's a selling point as well, Matty. I think if anything made footy fans dubious about AFLX, it was the prospect of losing players to injuries. Look, we're, we're one night into a three-day a tournament, still got 12 teams to play, but so far, so good. No injuries out of tonight's play. All right, let's go club by club now and pick out some highlights for you. Geelong beginning with Mark Witzarms. Well, he should be a natural at this sort of game. He's so athletic. He's arguably the most athletic player in the competition. Here we have a, a long Zupa goal. He looked in really good nick. Dodgy haircut, but apart from that, uh, a really promising opening of the season for him. Yeah, still peroxide apparently from Wacky Wednesday, would you believe? And Tim Kelly we see in the play here as well. He was impressive too tonight, wasn't he? Geelong have a great track record with mature age recruit uh, out of WA as well. This guy, he was runner-up in the Sandover medal last year, which is a pretty good form guide. He looks like base, and you look at him there, he's got physique. He could play around one. He looks ready. A bit of Matthew Lloyd about him too, with the grass in the air as he shoots from long range. Well, let's go to the Crows now and talk about the former cricketer, Alex Keith, who was impressive tonight. Alex Keith, uh, a great story. Came back to footy last year after several years playing cricket. Played a lot of senior footy for Adelaide last year and uh, only uh, got dropped just before the finals. Uh, he's put his hand up tonight with uh, some good performance. Yeah, absolutely. In his first game in particular, we see a conventional goal there. And then there's another one coming up as we watch this piece of play. There wasn't a whole lot of traditional sort of lead mark and goal in, in the games we saw tonight, but that was one uh, episode of it where he uh, kicked the traditional goal. As I said, he's a beautiful left foot kick too. I was he kicks the ball so well. So he'd be thrilled with, with his form tonight. It's middle of February, but he's in good touch. 
And Jake Kelly was the other player who was pretty impressive tonight as we see Harry Deer pop up again there. But the ball is coming to the hands of Kelly. Watch this as he goes for the long range. Zuper lines up and kicks the goal. And you're a basketball man, Matty. There's a bit of that in the games tonight where players will take a mark inside 40, then go outside the key uh, to a player to have the long shot and to get the 10-point goal. And that was a good example of that. Yeah, and another one here. It did feel a bit like that, didn't it, uh, at times? There was a bit of basketball about this game. All right, let's switch to Frio now and have a chat about this man, Stefan Giro, who made a bit of an impact tonight. Well, Frio took a very young squad into the first game. They totally turned the team over for the second game. But Giro uh, was impressive in the... Uh, the early game against Geelong did, did some nice things and uh, look he's not going to play around round or anything like that but uh, Ross Lyon was really thrilled with the application of the young team young players in the first game Giro was an example of that yeah and that was impressive there how he came back into the play after laying the tackle and then got the ball and kicked the goal Andrew Brayshaw was a player that I think a lot of Frio fans wanted to keep an eye on tonight number two pick in the NAB AFL draft last year again did a couple of nice things uh, that showed that he could well play uh, be ready to play round one. Just looks a natural footballer from a great football family. And there was this other moment tonight as well where we saw Michael Walters go to Brad Hill with the footy. That was a pretty impressive moment. This might have been my favourite piece of play for the night. I think it sums up what AFLX is. I think when Bradley Hill, working hard, gets the ball to Walters. Hill, we know, is a supreme athlete. Kept on running, gets the ball back from Walters and kicks a goal. To me, that is what that is great. AFLX footy, if we can say such a thing, Matty. And let's hear from Brad Hill. Uh, Hilly, this game's built for you. Yeah, it's actually all right. Um, to be honest, I was struggling a fair bit myself, but I reckon everyone else is struggling just as bad, if not more. Um, and I got onto a few, few easy goals, which is uh, which is good. Brad Hill there with Lemo to Port Adelaide now, and all eyes tonight on Jack Watts, who in the end was the skipper because Robbie Gray was a late withdrawal. Yeah, Jack Watts would be pleased, I think, with his first outing. I mean, a little bit of extra pressure as well, I guess, being named captain of a very famous footy club for his first game in the uh, not quite from the Gray, Matty, but. Uh, a good first up outing. He should also be suited to sort of AFLX top footy because he's a, he's a pretty good athlete and he's a good runner. Willie Rioli tonight for the West Coast Eagles. Again, uh, a big famous name that a lot of Eagles fans were waiting to see. Our colleague and friend Travis King has been talking about Willie Rioli for 12 months. Uh, to get excited by him, he slashed a hammy last year, couldn't really play, but he showed some bit of excitement this year. All the West Coast will be talking about Willie Rioli. He's going to be very dangerous around forward, and he'll play round one. And we're also impressed with Jack Petricelli. Yeah, he didn't play uh, in, in league AFL footy last year, but uh, he showed a bit of pace at one stage with this uh, sort of dash through the midfield, taking, a, uh, his, taking his opponent on, running through the midfield and kicking a really nice, steady goal from just inside 40. And he stands out a bit too, which is a good thing. Let's turn to Collingwood now, and this was a really interesting moment tonight, Ash. James Aish with the footy. Well, when you've got 10 minutes a half and no time on, any opportunity to milk a few seconds you take, and here he is with the Joe the Goose goal by you know, letting five seconds off the clock while kicking the goal. Smart play by a player who needs a very big season. Now, the AFL frowns upon that, doesn't it, in the regular season? I don't think there'll be any memos going Collingwood's way <laughs> <laughs> after this performance. Yeah, no, you can't do that in the regular season. Want to have a look at this Braden Maynard super goal as well because this was pretty good from a long way out. Look at him go. That is Low a great in the goal. Air, but that's a cracking goal. That's a great goal at any time in any standard. It wouldn't have been, you know, it was inside 50 in the regular season, but just a nice goal under pressure. And we also caught a glimpse there of the goalpost sliding up as well, which is uh, another feature of AFL X. A uh, final summation of the evening, Ash. Where do you think we're going to go with this format? We've got two more nights of this trial to go. Well, we'll let the next two nights play out. I can see us going down the path, say, like the Rugby Sevens, where AFL teams will have their AFL squads, they might have specialised AFL X players who will play different tournaments in different areas. You know, with the, the, the Wallabies rugby union team, none of them play the super, none of them play sevens. Sevens is spe for specialist sort of rugby players. I can see that being down the path for AFL X, an international game, a game of weekend tournaments, and Collingwood may have its AFL team and its AFL X team. Or could we have franchises like Big Bash style where you actually see players from different teams coming together? to form specialised AFLX teams. Absolutely, I'm looking at a few mates of mine and we can start a Caulfield team. We'll just buy <laughs> great players and we'll send them around the world to play. Yeah, that could be the way to go as well. Ash, thank you for being with us. Thank you for being with us as well. It was Adelaide victorious on the opening night of AFLX.